For generations, the treetops of southwestern Australia have been home to the forest red-tailed black cockatoo. But now swarms of European honeybees are invading these birds' nests. Jonica Newby reports on the raging battle between the birds and the bees. This is a different kind of story about the birds and the bees. I climbed a nest early one morning and there was four downy young chicks in the nest. When we came back at lunchtime, we noticed that there were a lot of bees around the entrance to the nest and a female trying to get back into the nest. And when I climbed and had a look, all of the chicks that are being either stung to death or actually being suffocated by a large swarm of bees. In the southwest of Australia, domestic honeybees are leaving their hives in swarms and taking over our forests. They've gone feral. And ornithologist Ron Johnston fears for our native birds. People think, gee, you know, bees are wonderful, they make honey, I love honey. You know, I love honey too. And you've always considered bees as being part of the landscape. You know, they're uh, such a natural thing. But when they're actually killing our beautiful birds, then, you know, it's time that we fought back. The European honeybee has been in Australia since the 1820s. Till now, it's been domesticated, living in beehives, foraging out to collect pollen, but always coming home to make honey and breed. But now, something's causing these honeybees to leave their hives and kill our wildlife. These are the real bad bees. This is, uh, this is our enemy. And this chick could be their next victim. It's a very rare forest red-tailed black cockatoo. Sitting by itself in a tree hollow for another 70 days, this lone chick is defenceless if bees arrive. Beekeepers like Alan Baker know it's natural for bees to leave the hive. It's a phenomenon called swarming. But what was causing hordes of honeybees to leave their hives en masse and swarm into the forest? Alan thinks it's this plant, canola. Over the last few years, there's been a huge increase in the amount of canola grown in the southwest, and bees love it. When they're on canola, they get very excited. The excitement of the food coming in and the nutrient level of it makes them swarm a little bit early or get excited. Canola has a high nutrient value. It acts like an energy boost to the pollinating bees, and that's causing overbreeding. A population explosion in the hives forces bees to swarm off into the forests. And when honeybees leave the hive permanently, they turn feral, reverting to a wild type of bee. Their colour darkens and they're much more aggressive. These are the problem bees, taking over the tree hollows that native birds need to nest. Now Ron's got a battle on his hands. For years he's been studying endangered black cockatoos. A number of things draws me to them, apart from being spectacular birds. They mate for life. They uh, live for a very long age, probably up around 80 years of age. They have traditional nest sites, they return to the same hollow to breed every two to three years. They're a very vulnerable species, and they're so rare that this is the first time these cockatoos have ever been filmed. Last week, the first of this season's babies hatched, and Ron wants to make sure it's OK. Tension on that for us, will you, Tony? Once I start to go up. It's a 20-metre high tree we need to climb. What kind of tree is this? It's a Mary. They're called widow makers. <laughs> now you tell me. We've only okay. got... Yep, have a peep in the hollow and you'll see a, he's only about six, seven days old. Oh, wow. Oh, she's gorgeous. And there's only one chick in here. Only one chick, common? they only, yeah, only ever weigh the, the one egg. If the black cockatoos lose their only homes to bees, they're in real danger of extinction. 
out of our 76 birds in this park, we've only got six breeding pairs. So we've got six nests here, and in the past five years we've lost two of those from feral bees. And what happens to the birds if they lose these hollows? Well, I think once the hollows are gone, the pair whose territory this is, is in, uh, might not breed again. You know, they don't breed till they're four years of old, that are too young to breed. Uh, but the hollows are crucial. Throughout their whole breeding life, this pair would be dependent on this particular hollow. Coming down, Tony. Precious cargo. Ron's monitoring the condition of all the birds on this reserve. Each chick has to be lowered down to a research officer for an inspection on the ground. The baby cockatoo is doing well so far, but it still has months of isolation to go. And for Ron, that's a risk he's not going to take. It's time to go on the attack. I think we have to declare war on the introduced honeybee, particularly these feral colonies of, of honeybees, all the way from the Kimberleys to the south coast. It's got to be a war and it's got to be fought by a whole range of people, right from individuals through to the community groups, state governments and federal governments. He's declared war on three fronts. The first is using chemical weapons, outright killing of the feral bees with insecticide. On the second front, he's trying to stop the bees from swarming. And that's where Alan Baker's come up with a simple solution. All swarms are led by the queen bee. The key to stopping the swarms is to keep the queen bee prisoner in the hive. By adding a narrow wired grid, Alan's found a way to let the worker bees come and go, but keep the larger queen locked in the hive. The final front is making new homes for the endangered cockatoos. Up until now, Ron has been fighting the bees alone, but now he's enlisted a band of brothers to volunteer their time and expertise. Well, the charcoal forms a bit of a good base, and then the peat moss, how fine is that stuff? A builder a has made imitation tree made hollows out of plastic pipe as extra homes for cockatoos. Peat moss is added to simulate a natural hollow. And the local water corporation lends them a cherry picker to help put them up. OK, yeah, the fork would be better. Impregnated with insecticide, the hollows become a safe home for the birds, but not the bees. Ron's defence force is growing. We have an army of people from the community. We've got the beekeeping industry interested. It's a matter of getting federal government agencies and of the community to start to do something about it. And I think it really we should be able to outsmart the bee. Ron hopes he can hold the battle line to save the birds from the bees, at least until more troops arrive. <laughs>